You want to know how much does it cost to live in Pompano Beach, Florida in 2021? We're going to get into that in a whole lot more detail in this episode. What's up everybody? Welcome back to the channel Life in South Florida. My name is Joe McFarlane. If you haven't already, go ahead right now and take this opportunity to click the subscribe button below and don't forget to ring the bell right next to it so you can be first to be notified whenever I drop brand new content on YouTube. If you didn't know, I am the broker owner of Reform Realty, South Florida Homes and Luxury Estates. And as much as I love to make these videos, I would love it even more to be able to help you with all of your real estate needs. So the information that you see popping up below is my direct contact information. I am the actual person who will be answering the calls, responding to your text and to your emails. And if you have anything that you have to ask me about real estate or anything else as it pertains to life in South Florida, never hesitate to reach out and ask. Also, I'm interested to know what you think. So below, don't forget to like the video and put a comment below and I'll be more than happy to communicate with you on future ideas for videos that I'll be shooting for this channel. Today, we're gonna to be speaking about the cost of living in Pompano Beach, Florida in 2021. And I'm going to be using a special software program that I have paid for on a premium account. This is not a cost to you. It doesn't cost you anything. I've already paid for it. We're gonna get into the nitty gritty details and let the data speak for itself. So without further ado, here is the cost breakdown for living in Pompano Beach, Florida, 2021. Let's check it out. All right, here we go. Let's get right into it. I'm using a website called bestplaces.net. This is a premium paid for version. I went ahead and I absorbed the expense at your convenience so you don't have to pay for it. I already did. And what they do is they break down some very accurate data with regard to living expenses in cities all over the United States of America. And I can compare them to the national average and I can also compare them to each other. So one city to another city in Florida or one city in Florida to another city outside of state. So let's go ahead and take a look at Pompano Beach cost of living in 2021 as it pertains to the national average right here represented by the column labeled USA and the rest of the state's average, the Florida state average. So again, we have three columns, actually four columns. Four columns is, uh, the, the first column here is gonna be the category. The second is Pompano Beach. Third is the Florida state average and USA, the national average right here in the last column. So just a quick uh, key for you to understand, uh, the national average is represented by the number 100. Anything that is under 100 is below the national average by that amount of points. Anything above the number 100 is above the national average by that amount of points. So for example, overall cost of living as it pertains to Pompano Beach, Florida is 4.2 basis points higher than the national average. The Florida state average is 2.8 basis points higher than the national average. Now this is gonna be really important because later on when I compare the cost of living from Pompano Beach to another place in the United States of America, what you're gonna see is, is that even though Florida is higher than a national average, Florida will also be substantially lower than the average of a similar suburb or city elsewhere in the United States. And we're gonna look at that a little bit later in this video. So it's important that you also know that if I hover right over here, it actually explains the total cost of living category is weighted subjectively as follows. Housing, 30%, food and groceries, 15%, transportation, 10%, utilities, 6%, healthcare, 7%, and miscellaneous expenses such as clothing, services, and entertainment, 32%. State and local taxes are not included in any category, which is very interesting because when you factor in state and local taxes and comparing Florida to New York, the results are gonna be astronomical because last time I checked, New York, has very high sales tax and very high property tax as well. Just something for you to understand and consider. So let's go ahead and take a look at the rest of this chart. This is Pompano Beach, Florida, as it compares to the rest of Florida and the national average. Groceries, 5.1% higher than the national average. Healthcare is actually um, lower, lower cost of healthcare than the national average. Housing, 93% lower than the national average. Medium home cost. This number is not accurate. 
okay? I wanna just point this out real quick. The number is skewed as it pertains to Florida, um, Pompano Beach, I should say. In the state of Florida, very likely so as well. Now, let me just quickly explain why, and then I'm gonna show you some more accurate numbers that, that should be considered for this category. First of all, in Florida, we have a lot, a ton of condos. Other cities in the United States of America don't have as many condos as Florida does. Now, condos obviously are a lower price point than single family homes. So when we factor in condos with single family homes, it actually brings the average down, it brings the median down as well. So this number 215 more accurately reflects medium home cost for a condo in Pompano Beach, not a single family home. So let me just quickly switch over to another graph that's a lot more accurate. This is a uh, local from the National Association of Realtors and uh, the Realtor Florida Palm Beach and uh, Broward County, that's where Fort Lauderdale is. And this is for the month of May, which is last month. Today is June 28th, so the June results have not yet been published. But uh, for the month of May, for example, the median sale price is 482,000. The average sale price is 653,000. Now, the reason why these are so much higher is because they're only factoring in single family homes. You see that? Okay. But when I scroll down a little bit and we start factoring in condos and townhomes, you're going to notice that the median and the average price is 205,000 versus 261,000. And this number over here is a lot more accurate with the data that's being populated on the other report right here. So, this number is a little bit skewed. I do want to point it out that it is more accurate to say that the medium home cost for maybe a townhome or a condo is around 215,000, which is very uh, close to what the national average might be. But as far as home costs, uh, it's going to be very high. It's going to be very high as compared to the national average, which is which is shown right here. Okay. So again, townhomes and condos, 205, 261. Let's scroll back up. Single family homes, anywhere between 482,000 and 653,000, depending on whether you're comparing median or the actual average, okay? So we'll come back to this a little bit later today, but this is very important information as it pertains to Pompano Beach specifically. So let's go ahead and continue with the rest of these um, comparisons. Utility costs, 96.1. So we're actually below the national average, 96.1. In fact, Pompano Beach is below the Florida average, which is pretty interesting. Transportation expenses were actually higher than the national average, 29.8 basis points higher than the national average. This next key is speaking specifically about rent per bedroom size. So we have studio, one bedroom, two bedroom, three bedroom, and four bedroom rentals. And in every single scenario represented by the color orange, which is Pompano Beach, you can see that Pompano Beach is more expensive than the national average in every scenario probably has to do with the fact that we live near the beach, which is going to come at a higher uh, rental rate, of course. This represents Pompano Beach. The dark blue, which is the second color down, represents the Miami, Fort Lauderdale, West Palm Beach metro area. Those are the three major cities that are nearby. It makes sense that the major cities are a little bit more expensive than Pompano Beach, okay? And we can see that reflected in each of those graphs. That's accurate, it's very consistent. So Pompano Beach is more expensive than uh, the average rental rates in the rest of Florida. That is represented by the third color here. You see how the orange bar graph sticks out further. The light blue, you would call that. Okay. And then of course, Pompano Beach rental rates are more expensive than the national average. Again, having to do with living near the beach. Here's a cost of living map. It's a big map that's going to color code a cost of living in Pompano Beach. So the darker the red color, the more expensive the cost of living. So you can see in Pompano Beach here, it's represented by this, I guess you can say, lighter purple color right here, okay? Which is lower than some surrounding areas. Boca Raton, notoriously more expensive. Coral Springs and Parkland, also notoriously more expensive. Lauderdale by the sea. Lauderdale, this is where the city of Fort Lauderdale is notoriously more expensive. And then these surrounding areas are actually less expensive. Very interesting. Tamarack, Coconut Creek, right? Deerfield Beach, less expensive than Pompano Beach. So you have your very expensive places like Parkland and Boca, and then you have your mere expensive places 
which would be like Pompano. And then you have your, I guess you could say, more inexpensive places, which are the surrounding areas of Pompano Beach and in between Boca Raton. Take a look at how Pompano Beach compares to another city or suburb, I should say, in the United States that is similar. Now, I want to be as fair as possible. So what I did was, is I compared Pompano Beach, Florida, to Long Beach, New York. Long Beach is a beach town in Long Island, New York. It's a suburb of New York City. They have an ocean, we have an ocean. And to be fair in comparing the two together. So what this is immediately saying is that an average salary of $50,000 in Pompano Beach, Florida, could vary from $76,000 to $89,000 differential in Long Beach, New York. What that means is, is that it could cost anywhere between $76,000 to $89,000 uh, more expensive living in Long Beach than it would be Pompano Beach. And that you would need of these two dollar amounts, almost $25,000 to $30,000 to offset the cost of living in Long Beach, New York than Pompano Beach. So in summary, yes, New York is more expensive. So again, in this particular, uh, we have our category on the left, we have Pompano Beach right here, we have Long Beach price here, and we have the differential posted right here. So in the first four categories, these are different types of homeowners. Homeowner one, two, three, and four. Each of these homeowners have a different scenario. This person has no childcare, it's not considered. This person has owns a home, but they are childcare. The taxes are not considered. This one here, homeowner, childcare, taxes are included. And then the last one here, homeowner, no children, and the taxes are included. So let's go with the, I think this one probably might be the most common, uh, people who own the home, who have children, and want to factor in the taxes. And what we're gonna see here is that the cost set, the cost of living, you're gonna need approximately 39 to $40,000 more living in New York than what you would living in Florida. And that, it goes the same for any of these four situations. 31,000, 34,000, 39,000, $36,000 more income needed to offset the cost differential of living in Long Beach, New York than Pompano Beach, Florida. It's more expensive. Now the next couple of categories below are specific to renters with or without children, with or without taxes, and with or without childcare. So again, let's go to the one that I think is the most common, a renter with childcare and taxes included. Again, you're gonna need $30,000 more income to offset the cost of living in Long Beach, New York than living in Pompano Beach, New York. Let's scroll down a little bit more. We can see here some index or indices, I should say. Um, again, 100 represents the national average. So 104.2 means that Pompano Beach is 4.2% higher than the national average as a homeowner with no childcare and the tax is not included. In Long Beach, New York, it is 69.3% higher than the national average and the difference is 62.5% more expensive to live in Long Beach, New York than it is in Pompano Beach if you are a homeowner with no childcare and taxes not included. Let's go down to the one that I think might be the most relevant, which is this one here. A homeowner with children, taxes included. Again, cost of living, Pompano Beach, 99.6%, just under the national average. Long Beach, Florida, 177.9%. That is 77.9% higher than the national average. And of course, the difference between Pompano Beach and Long Beach is that Long Beach, New York is 78.6% more expensive for a homeowner that needs childcare with the taxes included. As you can see, each of these scenarios, it is always more expensive to live in Long Beach, New York than it is in Pompano Beach, New York by 62, 69, 78, 72. And this is down here, we're talking about not homeowners, but renters. But 56%, 62%, 59%, 53% more expensive to live in Long Beach. All these other costs. Food and groceries, again, 5.1%. Pompano Beach, 5.1 basis points over the national average. We're at eight percent national average. The difference between Pompano Beach and is 3.3 percent. Housing, well below the national average. Whoa, holy cow! New York, 252 percent. That is 152 percent over 
the national average. That is astronomically high. Uh, that is for housing, right? This probably includes uh, which is just, and that's the reason why everyone's lining up from New York to get the heck out of there because it's so much more expensive than moving to Florida. Why not? 129% more expensive to be a renter in New York as opposed to Florida. Medium home cost. Again, we're back here again. These numbers are skewed. Uh, correct number. This number only pertains to condos and townhomes. When we factor in the other number, which was 482,000 versus 584, obviously the median home cost is lower in Pompano Beach, Florida than it is in Long Beach, New York. But the more appropriate number would be 482 versus 584. So as you can see, it's almost a $100,000 differential in the medium home cost between Pompano Beach, Florida and Long Beach, New York. Utilities, lower in South Florida, lower than a national average even, which is pretty interesting. I seem to think that the reason our utilities are lower is because we don't have cold winters and because we don't have cold winters, we don't have to pay as much money to heat our homes. And that's the reason why I think it's, it's lower. Transportation, we're actually pretty high. That's 29, almost 30 basis points higher than the national average. Of course, it's very consistent to say that New York is higher in transportation costs. Healthcare costs, we are lower than the national average, where New York, Long Beach, New York is higher than the national average. Interesting. Taxes, well, we, uh, we anticipated this. One of the many reasons why people move to Florida is because of our awesome lower tax rates. Okay, so we are substantially lower than a national average and New York is substantially higher than the national average. You can see that's reflected here, 125% more expensive. And that's one reason out of many why you should move down here. Now, childcare, about 10.3 basis points higher than the national average. And of course, in New York, it's more expensive, 185, okay, 68% difference between the two cities and miscellaneous we have down here. I just wanna finish off on this sheet again which populates every single month. And right now, even though we're at the end of month of June, this May report is the data that is available to us as of this second. So again, for single family homes, the median is 482,000. The average sale applies to 653,000. It's up, look at this, 33 to 36% from last year. That's pretty impressive growth in the housing market in terms of appreciation and supply and demand with the extreme high demand that we're seeing right now in the summer of 2021 in South Florida. Now, when I scroll down and I take a look at this too, medium days to contract, that means on average, the single family's home is going under contract in 31 days. It takes approximately one month of showing your home for it to go under contract, which is kind of wacky because a lot of homes that I'm seeing go under contract are doing so within about a week or two or even within a couple of days. Usually those homes are the ones that are correct and aggressively priced. And the reason why I say correct is because they're priced closer to fair market value, so they go under contract sooner. The ones that are overpriced are the ones that sit on the market longer. And that's one of the reasons why this number is offset and a little bit larger than what I think it could be. But either way, no matter which way you slice it, it is 35% lower than what this time last year was. So homes are being purchased much faster than this time last year. 126 is the inventory for the month of May. This time last year, it was 191, which means the inventory is down 34%. Again, supply and demand, the supply is low, so the demand is higher. Again, another one here, looks month supply of inventory. Inventory is down 52%. Let's take a look at the exact same numbers for townhomes and condos, okay? So again, the average is 205,000 at 261. This number much more closely reflects the data that we just saw in the report uh, on the other side. If we look at the median time to contract, 86 days as compared to 31 days. Wow, so you mean to tell me that condos and townhomes are taking 86 days to go into contract and single families are taking 31 days? Why so slow? The reason why is because single family homes are much more desirable than a condo. They're much more desirable than a townhome or a villa. Also, single family homes are easier to finance 
than a townhome or a villa. Condos usually require 20 to 25% on a down payment. And uh, because of that, there's less of a target audience who are trying to get those homes under contract. So naturally that translates into more time on the market. Check this out, inventory. Okay, well, inventory is down 76%. Again, that's gonna contribute to supply and demand, law of economics, high demand, low supply equals higher prices. Plus we have low interest rates too. All right, there you have it, folks. The 2021 cost of living in Pompano Beach, Florida, as it pertains to the national average and similar suburbs like Pompano Beach in other states like New York. As it always seems to shake out, the Florida city remains supreme. They are the victor in this contest in terms of cost. Um, and that's a major reason as to why people are moving south from New York and other major cities like Chicago, Los Angeles, etc. If you haven't already, take the opportunity right now to click the subscribe button below. Don't forget to ring the bell that's right next to it. This way you're gonna be notified the second that I drop brand new content and I'd love to hear from you and I look forward to seeing you all very soon.